It's another episode of Dr. Me First. It's me, Dr. Erin freaking Wiseman, family medicine physician, coach, mother of three, all around badass. So happy to be here with you today. I am talking with a special guest, Dr. Elizabeth Fontaine. I'm working on my French, but it's not so much. She's a French Canadian who is an OBGYN in Vermont, and she is doing some really, really cool work that we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, let's pay some bills. So here's a real quick message from Resolve, a physician contract review company. At Resolve, they believe that knowledge is power for physicians and that power gives you the control over your financial future. Resolve believes that by mining, analyzing, and synthesizing data, they can provide you with the information and insight that empowers you to diagnose the health of your career, full understanding of your worth, and maximize your potential when it comes to your contract. As a company founded by a doctor for doctors, Resolve's focus is on the well-being of those whose purpose in life is to care for the well-being of others. To have this incredible company review your employment contract, which you can do at any time, not just when you get hired, find them at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash resolve. The link is in the show notes. Okay, let's get into our conversation. Here we go. Welcome to the podcast, my friend, my colleague, my fellow coach, Dr. Elizabeth Fonten. It's so great to have you here. Oh, my pleasure. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and the magic you're putting in the world. Yeah, so I'm glad that you were able to pronounce my last name pretty good, Fonten. So everybody knows that this is a French name. I'm not from France. I'm from Quebec. Um, so I'm a physician, I'm a specialist, I actually have two uh, specialties. My first one is OBGYN, so I've been uh, board certified in, as an OBGYN for the last 27 years. And the second one uh, is in lifestyle medicine, so probably since 2017, which is a very new uh, board certification. Um, that was uh, in the first group that uh, did the exam. So I'm board certified in both of these things. So I practice in a very small community in Vermont uh, as an OBGYN for 25 years. And then with the interest, because at, before my medical school, I studied kinesiology and I have a master's degree in obesity and exercise physiology. So I have my patient to try to improve their lifestyle because they were getting older and growing with me and they needed some changes to prevent chronic disease. So I became quite interested with the lifestyle uh, medicine. So I became medical director of lifestyle medicine at my hospital and also medical director of what we call Rise Vermont, which is a community collaborative in order to try to help people to change their lifestyle. So it's all over United, uh, not United States, but the state of Vermont. So rise Vermont. I love it. I love, I love, I love all the things you do. So we met through the Physician Coaching Alliance and I have just fallen in love with you. And I'm so glad to have you here today because you're like myself. We're very like eclectic and we just like doing things like, and all of it is loves. Like I don't think I could cut anything out of my life that I'm doing right now. And it's, and you're very similar with lifestyle medicine, with coaching, all of that. But specifically today, we're going to get into one of your loves, which is transitioning millennials. So talk a little bit about your word topic and how you got to this. So then we're talking a little bit about coaching here, which came to me through lifestyle. So a lot of my uh, fellow physician were uh, becoming, you know, um, credential in health coaching. Uh, which I thought at first was kind of simple. We, you know, the whole planet calls themselves health coach. But I went through a, an evidence-based program uh, with Margaret Moore. So well coach, that was that was an amazing program. And I've learned a lot. And then suddenly I had to stop myself and I said, wow, if I had known those techniques as a young physician, how much more could I have been able to help my patient? So it kind of helped me to continue, you know, working into this field. And then I decided that at some point, because I'm a, you know, mature physician, that it was maybe the time for me to do something else if I really wanted 
to give myself time to do it. So I started a business with a partner where we are working on uh, leadership coaching and well-being. So the combination of the two. And people will say, why aren't you just doing this with healthcare? Uh, well, my partner is is a previous CEO of the hospital. And I think that at some point we kind of hit the threshold and needed a little bit of thinking of, but taking to a different, you know, the population. Uh, and I think that we found our niche by giving a, a lot of, at the beginning, um, pro bono coaching on the younger population. And we're just fascinated by this group. Young Millennium needs coaching to transition and not only in leadership where we can help them to learn about being you know what it is to be a leader but also to make sure that they keep their health and i think the combination that's what we thought would definitely be very helpful i love it so i'm an old millennial i'll tell you that i like just barely made it into the category and so was it from your experience with working with my age demographic, the physician, was it your daughters? What was it that made you like key in and be like, these are my people? Do you just love being around the energy of young people? Tell me more. Yeah. Well, I think you've got it. I think, uh, I don't know if it's because I'm this one of these person that like to be, you know, more with the young. Yeah. I have two daughters that are in this age, like 22, 26, uh, and um, so I find myself being very comfortable with that age. My partner was uh, like that as well. And we kind of built like I gave some pro bono when they has the COVID and it helps some students. Like my daughter is studying in New Zealand in chiropractic. And then the, when they they actually doing excellent over there, but they had a period where they had to be, you know, like us in, in certain not being able to, uh, you know, being too, too exposed. And I said, well, why don't I offer free pro bono to these students? And so I start getting very interested into uh, what they have to um, go through. And this transition, a lot of them were transitioning from last year of their uh, course to, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a chiropractor next year. So it's very interesting to be present in that moment. So I'm, 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 I'm fascinated by this uh, element. And, and I think that obviously with the knowledge of the healthcare, that would be fantastic also to help a younger, you know, medical student resident to to kind of go through and help them into the uh, evolution of their leadership. You know, any parents love to think that how can I help my, you know, kids to transition? And I think that this presence, which is very different, people don't understand when we talk about coaching. It's really this thinking partner that help them to have the self discovery and self awareness. And, and that is something that we don't have the chance to talk. I mean, my kids don't necessarily go that deep with me. And we can go very deep with these uh, conversations. What do you see as the difference between transitioning now in 2020 versus maybe your transition and before or even like in the 90s? How is it different now? I mean, I think that the parenting is very different, you know, what they call it, the helicopter parent. I mean, it's just like, you know, there I, I was much more on my own and very self-sufficient. Our parents didn't have, you know, the baby boomer. And and I don't want to be negative into what's happening with the millennial, but the millennial had, you know, parents that were right beside them quite a bit. And to be lunch suddenly into a different world makes it quite a bit uh, different. The other thing is the pace. The pace is fast. Everything is so fast compared to what it was, uh, I believe, into uh, you know our age. I give the example sometimes. I think that my kids would, uh, you know, they come to the age where suddenly I am intelligent as a parent. It takes a while. Huh? They have to reach about 20 uh, 23, 25, before they can say that, uh, oh my gosh, this was good, mom. So, you know, when they were younger, I would I would not be, you know, first of all, because we were French speaking, me and my husband, couldn't help them as much into their English or different work. So they, they were on their own. They had to. And plus, I was one of those mother that I remember uh, my kid when she was two and at the pool, you know, we were all the people and she was struggling and people say, hey, let's go help. And I said, no. You know, we're all here. She got to learn how to get to this side. So 
that's my philosophy. And I don't know that we have the chance to give that. And I may not be doing that all the time, but I'm giving that as an example. So it's, it, they're struggling more now uh, because of these, uh, you know, kind of two examples. I think that's, those are some great examples. Some other things that I thought about as you were talking that kind of triggered in me is I think as the millennial generation, there's been such heavy expectations placed on us as a generation, like starting Chinese lessons at five or becoming a competitive athlete at eight. Or I'm just giving examples that I can think that are, are relative to what I saw. And I, I think that's different than previous generations. You know, we kind of dog on millennials like these were, you know, kids that have been raised by video games and they don't go outside and da, 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 da. But I also think that it's probably one of the generations that has had just some unrealistic pressures placed on them. And the other thing that came to mind, too, is that everybody's a winner attitude. Like, you get a trophy no matter what you do. And I think that has positives and drawbacks to it as well, that when you transition to a different type of situation, you look around and you're like, I'm here. I did the participation. Where's my trophy? And and you don't get that recognition in a workplace, evidently. You don't. You don't get that. So then you feel like you're doing something wrong. Yeah. And, and the, surprisingly, the millennium are really involved. They, they want an organization that allow them, uh, that listen to them, and they allow them for a, a growth. So sometimes we, 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 we think maybe a little bit negative about this population. They, you know, they're, they're moving fast also. Huh? They change job in every two, three years, but if you don't give them the chance and listen to, you know, how much they can help the organization to grow. So that's um, kind of a blind spot of the organization. So when we say our company, we want to help the parents, help the organization to, to recognize the importance of this generation and not just let them and just let go and everybody changed job every two years. You know, it's very hard. I mean, as a physician, us, we had a tendency at my age to stay pretty much in the same position for quite some time. I'm certainly a, a, a good or a bad example of that being 26 years in the same organization as an OBGYN. There's pros and cons. The half of the population here know me because I've delivered half of the population. So that, that's good. And to the new physician, I don't know that they have the chance to do that. But, but you know what? I think that for me, it was a discovery, self-discovery of uh, potential leadership potential that I had never had the chance to, to value. I mean, nobody valued that. Maybe I was a female physician, was you know, and uh, I kind of look at the leadership as being something like my father, you know, he leads and decide everything. And then you learn that, I wait a minute, if I had the chance to have somebody who had coached me, presence, and give me the chance to let go that mind that I didn't have the chance to mentor me appropriately, I think that there would have been a little bit more openness and give me uh, the size of me that maybe didn't have the chance to get to where. I mean, I, I, I did <laughs> reach a level of leadership, but it certainly was a very, very end of my career. Yeah. And I wonder if you had had that leadership coaching support, like how your trajectory would have been different in your career path. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want to regret, you know, I had an amazing career. However, I said, oh gosh, there's so many. And people will say that. I mean, I wish I had this opportunity of having somebody that could coach me. You know, how much information there is to learn in the medical school as an example to when I went there. <laughs> you know, it was, we thought there was a lot to learn, but now the, those medical students are so overwhelmed so they're already starting in this high level of energy that, you know, are dangerous to, to become, you know, with this burnout. So how do you help them to, uh, you know, understand a little bit better their path? And that is by giving them the chance to go deep and say, what is it really that mattered to you? What's your value? And, and bring that up. So that's, that's where we like to be able to help, help them. Uh, my life would be so different if someone had taught me value-based living 
versus goal based living. And that, that kind of is the premise of coaching is figuring out what is it that you value and then figuring out how you build that in your life. And then also figuring out how do you overcome the obstacles that keep you away from your values. And I think that's what a lot of millennials are doing when we are scrapping and, and tooth and nail fighting for work life balance that it comes off bad to older generations like, oh, these guys just stay in a job two years and move on. But I think it's because of that. I think it's because we know like at the end of our career, the gold watch from working 30 years at a place doesn't mean the same as I was present for my children as I raised them. I was able to be healthy and take care of my body rather than drive myself into the ground and have all sorts of chronic disease states. And so I appreciate hearing that because it is a trait of millennials and I'm a hundred percent in that because my bullshit tolerance filter is very thin. I don't stay where I'm not appreciated. And I think maybe that does come a little bit from parenting styles in the generation that I was raised in as a millennial is that I think we were infused with empowerment and infused with, I don't know if we call it confidence or, or I don't know the exact word, but then that can get a little skewy after you feel like you've been like drifting and like, well, where the fuck is my purpose? Cause I've changed jobs a few times and I'm not finding it. So it must be me. I must be broken. And so I think it's such powerful work that you come in and help my generation who maybe they've switched majors a few times or schools or career paths, or they're on their third PhD. I love that you get to come in and, and help navigate that journey. Cause again, it would have been so instrumental to me for someone to say like, no, 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 let's root you in your values. Cause hell, I didn't even know that for the longest time. Well, I mean, again, uh, the coaching and, and then I bring it to uh, the physician Alliance, uh, which is uh, this is one of those areas that is amazing to have the chance to network, you know, network with other um, physicians that, you know, have amazing experience and, you know, are there to help uh, other physicians, but also like us, other generation of these uh, physicians to give them the opportunity to have a safe place where they can review these uh, stressors. Uh, I think in my mind, it, it is this uh, sweet spot to help people to uh, go through without mental issues. I, I think this is the early stage of mental issues is this self-talk that we have and we don't have the chance to really open up. And the coaching has this element where we allow you to have this self-talk in this um, safe place, safe environment. So that's uh, that's very philosophical here. Yeah, the, and to normalize your experience, to to say like you're not alone in this. You're not alone if you feel like a drifter and you don't have any purpose. <laughs> it's nice you know, as you're building your business when you're like, I don't know how to build a coaching business. Well, because you never did it, so you might as well bind together and. But it is, it is kind of a different world because when you think about our uh, world of uh, physician, you know, when I decide to come and practice, I just opened the door and everybody was coming in because they needed a physician. In the coaching world, it's different. You have to learn how to, you know, sell this. So you have to go to podcasts with some other physician and talk about what you can do. Talk with other physician at the Physician Alliance. It's an amazing place too. And, and, and it's word of mouth. It's, it's really word of mouth. And, and learning, obviously, the, a little bit. No, not excessive, but we definitely need the social media because if you think about the millennial, this is where we need to be, like Instagram. And so we, that's a learning. But it actually is so much fun because they help us out. They, they will look and say, oh, you missed that one. And I'm like, okay, let me, let me do better for the next time. But that's okay. That's okay. It's a learning process. So that's why it's fun. It's fun. You, know, you, never, you never stop the learn. And that's why I think it's so cool with what you're doing with college students, early career launching out, med students, early physicians, you, you got all that. And so if there's a mom who's listening to this or maybe a grandma 
or a sister who's thinking about someone in her her family, what's the best way to reach out with you or learn more about what you're doing? So we have uh, an early website. This hasn't been too, too long. Uh, was born around the COVID-19, actually. So our website is letsleadllc.com. So uh, without any uh, just full uh, wording, uh, but when you say without apostrophe, just write it, letsleadllc.com. And uh, we're just starting to be on Instagram, Facebook. This is early stage, uh, but the best place is definitely the uh, website. And you actually have my personal uh, phone number on it. So, you know, do I give my phone number as well? 802-309-1217. So when you're calling, please leave a message. We'll be happy to uh, support you. Any uh, program that we do, the uh, very first coaching is uh, free, just to make sure that it fits with what, uh, you know, desire or the need uh, are there. So we're just making sure that it fits you well. I love that. I love it so much. And I appreciate you coming into Physician Coaching Alliance and being just an, an open book. We're actually getting ready to do a case study on your business and you've been so willing to open up and share and taking the tips and tricks that we're learning from our spunky millennial uh, digital agency that's embedded within PCA. And I just, you're just an inspiration. That stuff we learned about Instagram, you got it popping now. And so I'm just so proud to call you friend and colleague. Thank you so much for coming on Dr. Me First. And yes, all of those links and everything will be in the show notes for everybody. Hell, we'll even put her phone number in there. Want to see what it's like to hang out in a group with me? To catch me live, in person, and around all the other amazing women who listen to this podcast? Well, I want to invite you to our monthly free, totally free, masterclass that happens the last Sunday of every single month at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. So much fun. So much collective goodness all in one place. We're still doing the Be Happy Now series. And so I break down a topic each month that will help propel you into living a life where you can be freaking happy now. So if interested, jump on the website, burntouttobadass.com and sign up for this next month's masterclass. I can't wait to see you there. Oh, such a great show today with Dr. Elizabeth Fondin. Before we end... Let's let me give you the link to our sponsor again, Resolve. Remember, if you need help reviewing your employment contract before you sign, and again, you can do this after you sign, reach out to Resolve, who has great reviews and a reputation for doing that and so much more. Find Resolve at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash resolve and get the review process started today. All righty. Really, like, I think this is a great company because... How many times are we not empowered to ask for more, to even know what we can ask for more in our contract? So anyway, that's a total side note. It's a promo plug, but I really do stand behind this. And I think everybody should have their contract reviewed by people who can help you up level. My second kick of encouragement today, right? (laughs) After all of that. As I want to talk a little bit about some different types of moves that you can make. Because I think so many times when people come to me in coaching, they're like, I'm out. And the question is like, do I stay in medicine or do I not? And I just want to open up the space to say that there is a lot of other moves that you can do. It's it's not like, oh, I got to run the ball all the way down the field and score the touchdown, like there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of little steps to come in between there. And you're not doing anything wrong um, if you got to run a couple different plays before you score the, the touchdown. Okay. So four changes that I implement in anybody who comes to work with me as they're transitioning for a more sustainable career, finding a new job, 
They just want to be freaking happy are what I call tweaks, hops, pauses, and U-turns, okay? So tweaks, these are the small changes that you can make right now. They can make a huge world of difference. It can be something like, switching your schedule around, your call schedule with a partner, like one day a month. So like, God forbid, you get a three-day weekend. It could be purposely blocking out your lunch and then telling your schedulers, like, do not put anyone around that. Maybe it's taking your lunch at 1130 instead of 12 and changing your schedule around that. Maybe something as simple as getting a desk lamp. This is me right now. Getting a lamp to put on your desk because the overhead light really hurts your eyes and the computer screen is too much and you just need something different. I went the other day and found this really cute white and silver lamp. I'll put a picture of it because I'm doing an office redo right now when I get it all done. But just small things like that, that can just enrich your days, that can just make your current situation have that much more space to breathe and feel invigorated and help you move and figure out, help you cheer you up enough so that you can look at the path in front of you and see what you want. These small modifications, yes, they improve your life externally, but more importantly, they help you to feel like you're in control of your life and your work. And that's what keeps you energized. So actually my business coach, she talks about like weekly making tweaks purposely. So I'm doing a mastermind this year because I feel like I got to fill my cup as much as I got to fill other people's cups. And it's been really great to be empowered to be like, okay, what were your tweaks this week? How did you make your life, your workspace, your work, your family space better? And one of the things I did was like, oh, I went and got the van vacuumed out because the crumbs drive me nuts. It spins me into a thought tornado of like, oh my God, this van is junky. Oh my God, the kids have trashed it. They don't respect anything. Oh my God, we need to go buy like a new $40,000 van. That's that's just my thought tornado. So by just sweeping up the crumbs and making those small tweaks, it's like, oh, I can breathe a little better. Life is okay. So that's tweaks. Hops. Hops are slightly bigger changes, but typically on the same path. So maybe this is something that's like asking for a promotion, changing roles in the company, maybe changing the the amount of your FTEs. It could even be looking for a new job within your organization or area. This type of shift is helpful when you are stagnant, when you've tried all the tweaks And it's time for you to make the next step and further enjoy your career. Sometimes this is for people when they add a side hustle or start something else like that. Recently, I got to brag on one of my clients. So she came to me totally hating her job, wanting to quit, like roll up into a ball and just hide from the world. And one of the hops that she did when we really like dug into like, what she wants, what she values, what really lights her up was writing. She was an English major in addition to doing all her science courses in college. And I was like, hmm, what's into that? So working together over the last six months, we actually secured her a medical writing job as a side gig. And she negotiated to change her FTEs in the clinical world. So she has space to do her medical writing. You can be both and you can have those hops. Okay, third motion after tweaks and hops is pauses. This is pumping the brake. This is taking time away to get clarity. When you're moving at a million miles a minute, there's no way to get a grip on all the facts and all the thoughts and all the feelings. It's like drinking from the fire hydrant again, right? So you got to turn the stream down. Maybe it's for some of you just starting with a long weekend because taking a whole week or a whole month or a whole quarter or a whole year feels way too big. That's okay. For others, maybe the pause, it is time to take a full sabbatical or FMLA leave or step away. There's no right amount of time. Let me say that again. There's no right amount set of time. What is important is that you're able to stop You're able to sit and evaluate and look at your path forward and really identify what's important to you and how you're going to take the steps to get there. I highly encourage people during those pauses that it's not all about like working on yourself, but it's also about rest and recovery. 
If you haven't listened to any of my podcasts recently about white space, about rest and recovery, go back and listen to those. So a pause isn't about just pausing from work and then like moving a million miles a minute then at home and in other spaces in life. Because believe me, I've been there and done that. Pauses are really about like stopping and taking a breath in all areas and seeing what's staying and what needs to be cleaned out of your life. All right. And the last motion is U-turns. This is the big kahuna. A U-turn is a full out recreation or maybe renovation of your career, your life, your lifestyle, all of that. I always caution people who are thinking, I'm just going to quit it all and I'm going to do something else. Like I tell them when they start coaching me, you're not quitting your job tomorrow. Like a U-turn is never a good thing to do spur of the moment. Just like when you're in a car and you're going to pull a U-E. Like never a good idea. You need to find where there's plenty of space, that you're the right speed, all of that kind of thing. But I'm not saying that U-turns aren't a bad idea. They just need to be in the right setting. So I tell people typically, if you've started to think about this, you know, you have to go through some of the other tweaks and pauses and hops before you make the U-turn just to make sure you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Because no matter if you leave this job and move to another one, you take yourself with you. So if you haven't worked through your shit now, it's just going to follow you into the next one. Because doing a U-turn and exiting your career, it requires time, energy, money, maybe some re-education, new education, learning something new. There's also that investment in two of identity. And who are you if you're not this thing that you're doing now? So it can typically be more than you anticipate. So I really advocate for career changes, especially, you know, of course, since I've done them. But I do ask while you're burn- working through your burnout, is that you don't just see the U-turn as the only option. And also give yourself time to process through and give yourself space to work with someone who can help you through that. Just like in driver's ed. Like you just don't put a kid in a car and you're like, all right, drive it and send them out on the interstate to go 75 miles an hour. No, like you get them in the car, you sit in the passenger seat, the driver's ed teacher sits, you know, switches out, whatever. I think it's really important as we use that analogy to be like, Who's going to be sitting in the passenger seat with you? Because you get to pick that. All right. So remember, you can mix and match, redo, try more, any of these motions, but you just can't stay still. You cannot stay where you're at today, friend. And so remember, it's important to recognize your needs and know that you can adapt. You are in control. All right. This was a long one, but a goodie, I think. Remember, your life, your calling your pulse matters.